your quarters ready. Come on, baby, show me the money. <laughs> T, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just giving a little chilling into a little wilderness adventure, only indoors. Uh-uh, that pony's for the Christmas pageant. Now give those kids their money back. But I'll just give them their money back. <laughs> All right, but there goes your Christmas gift. <laughs> Oh, great. Must be my Christmas present from my parents. <laughs> Must be the aftershave and ties. I got the underwear for my birthday. Reverend, I'm glad I caught you. Merry Christmas, Reverend. Oh, thank you, Joey. My, don't we look handsome. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, why don't you go out and visit with Vanita? Mama needs to talk to the Reverend. Did the Reverend do something bad? Usually that's what it means, Joey. Come on, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is going on out there in that sanctuary? It looks like a county fair. It's the live manger scene for tonight's Christmas Eve service, Mr. Dixon. Pastor Douglas didn't need livestock to tell the Christmas story. He'd just stretch out his arms and in that beautiful, magnificent baritone declare, Behold, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And I swear you didn't need no pony to feel that power and glory. <laughs> I could do that. Uh, <clears throat> and the angels <laughs> proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace <laughs> toward me. You wouldn't be being disrespectful of Pastor Douglas, would you? No, no, of course not, Mrs. Dixon. But this. Being my first Christmas in my new church, I want the people to remember something. Hmm. Oh, and I think you will also be very moved. I will not, because I will not be there. I'm allergic to farm animals, and it's too late for Joey. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, by the way, Miss Dixon, um, one of my wise men caught the flu, so if you know anybody with a particularly handsome child who would like being in the manger scene, Joey, you're gonna be up late tonight, baby! <laughs> See why not? You got everything else in there. <laughs> oh, that's okay, Joey. Does anyone else have to visit the bathroom? <laughs> All right, men, follow me. And ladies, you can come with me. <laughs> Mr. Duck, where you think you're going? <laughs> Come in. Get back in that main chair. Ow! <laughs> what, what, what happened? Duck bit my ear. Are you, are you all right? My earring. I lost my earring. Oh, Miss. <laughs> I think this duck ate my earring. Miss Dixon, may, may, maybe you dropped it. Now, I'm Reverend. I saw the whole thing. The duck just reached up and dined on her diamonds. <laughs> A little villain. <laughs> My husband gave me those earrings on the first Christmas we spent together. And I wore them every Christmas since. And I want them back now. <laughs> you know, our dog swallowed my dad's Masonic ring once. We took it to the vet, he gave us some medicine, and the dog gave the ring back. <laughs> well, you know, there's a vet over on Manchester. Why don't you give me the 
duck, Mrs. Dixon, and uh, I'll be right back with the earring. But, Reverend, yeah. it can take longer than you think, and you have a service to do in a couple of hours. Well, don't worry. I'll be back in time. As the good book says, this too shall pass. <laughs> You, honey, I'm not letting that diamond out of my sight. I don't care if it is in that duck. <laughs> Where are you taking Reggie? Uh, 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 what? To the vet. Yes. What's wrong with them? We, we, we think he swallowed Mrs. Dixon's earring. Uh -huh. Are you going to hurt him? Oh, no, no, baby, no. No, no, he, he'll be fine, Jamal, I promise. I won't let anything happen to your duck. I, I trust you, Reverend, but I'm not sure Reggie does. I think I'll come with you. Okay, fine. Uh, Mrs. Dixon, why don't you hold the duck and I'll drive. You hold the duck. I'm running low on jewelry. <laughs> I'll hold the duck. Well, thank you. See, so you picked the most special day out of the year to come in here trying to be Dr. Doolittle. Get on out my way. <laughs> <laughs> Closed. Oh, uh, well, this is an emergency. Are you the vet? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, duck looks fine to me. <laughs> no, 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 you don't understand. That duck ate my diamond earring, and I want it back now. His name is Reggie. Are you Reggie's daddy? No, I'm his pastor. <laughs> not, not the duck's pastor, their pastor. Listen, doctor, can you just give the duck something to make it come out of one end or the other? <laughs> it's not that simple. First, you have to take x-rays to find out where the earring is. I told you it's in the duck. <laughs> Where in the duck? That will establish what procedure you'll need to get it out. Is that going to hurt? Not at all. Then can you do the extra? Uh, well, the truth is, it's Christmas Eve. I'm halfway out of here. I have a bunch of family stuff. You know, there, there's a pet hospital in Long Beach. They, they never close, and they have a good duck guy. Well, <laughs> oh, doctor, that's too far away, and I have a sermon in three hours. See, we wouldn't be in this mess. I know if I didn't have live animals in the manger scene. Exactly. But you know something? What? We didn't have no problems with any animals until you fed one your earring. I ain't feeding the earring. You just stepped on the Is he okay? Doesn't anybody care about Reggie? <laughs> <laughs> There's your diamond earring, and there's your duck. <laughs> Good. Now, get it out of his stomach and back on my ear. Well, it's not that simple. The earring has lodged in a fold inside the ventriculus. It's not going to pass naturally. Well, then make it pass unnaturally. <laughs> I can't. Not where it's stuck. And the problem is, if we leave the diamond earring in there, it's going to perforate a vital organ and the duck will die. Oh! Oh, then, doctor, what are we going to do? Well, we can operate or I can put the duck to sleep. Either way, you get your earring back. Well, how much for the operation? $1,200. <laughs> and how much if you put him to sleep? Well, it's Christmas. I'll do it for free, and we can all go home in about five minutes. <laughs> well, it looks like we're going to have to put the duck to sleep. Whoa, 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 wait a minute now. I made a promise to Jamal. Uh, listen, Reverend. I like animals as much as the next person. But get real. The duck got to go. <laughs> Mrs. Dixon! You two settle this. Let me know what you want to do. But quickly, please. If you decide to operate, the surgery could take several hours. Okay. Now, Reverend, listen. I can't pay for this operation. You can't pay for this operation. And I know Jamal's parents can't pay for it. Yes, Mrs. Dixon, but I promised the boy. Yeah, but the doctor said it could take several hours. You got a church full of people back there waiting for you. You made promises to them, too. I guess I don't have a choice, do I? No. No, you don't. Now, somebody's got to tell Jamal that we have to put the duck to sleep. <laughs> well, it's your earring. <laughs> Maybe so. But I think the person that made the promise needs to be the one to break it. <laughs> Go. <on. laughs> Hey, Jamal. Where's Reggie? Well, the doctor's gonna keep him for a while. Is he real sick? Sort of. 
Listen, we need to talk. Is he gonna die? Yes, he is. It's because of the earring that he ate. But, you know, we can always get you a new duck. I don't want a new duck. I want Reggie. I've had him since he was an egg. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jamal. You're not gonna kill Reggie! Listen, 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 Jamal. Just, uh... Just try to listen to me. It's not Reggie's fault. Mrs. Dixon shouldn't have been wearing shiny things around a duck. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Jamal, just, just let me... Let me explain. You promised nothing what happened. I, I know I promised. And a promise is a promise, isn't it? Well, Jamal, listen, sometimes, sometimes grown-ups make promises that, that they can't keep. Even reverence? <laughs> Not this reverence. Okay. Okay? I'm gonna save your duck. Okay. All right. We have to do this. Well, there's no one else to help me on Christmas Eve, is there? Where's the Reverend? Reverend, mm -hmm. we need you in here. <laughs> how, how about I stay out there and pray for him? <laughs> Got to have you both right now. Okay. Scalpel. Scalpel. I'm making the incision. <laughs> Reverend, I need you to sponge up the excess blood and fluid. No. I, don't, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> That's why God's plan didn't include me in having babies. Is Reggie okay? The surgery was a complete success. Reggie's gonna have to stay here overnight, but he's doing fine. I'm a little worried about your pastor, though. <laughs> Doctor, you did a very good job. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I passed out. Which time? <laughs> Here's your earring. Thank you. Thank you. I'll find a way to get you the money. No. Don't worry about the money. It's on the house. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Reverend, we better hurry. If we don't get there soon, the entire congregation is going to run down the street to the Baptist. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Come on. Oh, and Doctor. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord. And now. Let us celebrate the birth of our wonderful Lord. Bird. 
birth to the firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And in that country there were shepherds in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. It's only fitting that we act out the nativity with children. Because yes. Christmas is the time that we celebrate the child. Yes. It is the day set aside for all children. Yes. We buy them toys. Yes. We make them cookies. Yes. I like the peanut butter ones myself. That's right. <laughs> We pray for snow oh, yes. to come down for them to play in. Yes. But church, 40 million children live on the streets of the world cities. And in America, three children would die every day as a result of abuse and neglect. The average age of the homeless is nine. A gun takes the life of a child every two hours. 43% of our beautiful black children live below the poverty line. Well, oh, church, what about the children you know? And you know. And I know. What about the children that we love? When they look up to us with eyes that are hungry for our love, for our approval, do we reach out to them when they speak to us in innocent wisdom about what is right and what is wrong, do we hear them? I said, do we hear them? Do we return their precious gifts of honest feeling? Or are we too quick to turn our backs? Church, you got to answer these questions for yourselves. Yeah. You got to answer them for yourselves when you go home tonight yeah. and celebrate mm -hmm. the birth of our wonderful child Jesus. Yeah. All right. And as you do, remembering the words of Matthew when he said, Whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, yeah. mm -hmm. receiveth me. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Oh, I don't think I heard the church say, Amen. Amen. Yeah.
Hey, Merry Christmas, Mom. Yeah, Dad, you too. Yes, I know it's 3 o'clock in the morning back there, but I had to call you. There's a miracle in progress. It's snowing in Los Angeles. Turn on your TV. It's all over the news. The whole city is paralyzed. Shut down. Nothing's moving. How much? About a half inch. <laughs> Yo, well, well, listen, listen guys. I, listen, guys. I, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to go out and play in the snow. <laughs> I love you guys. Merry Christmas. don't you think? <laughs> Not much to choose from, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's too bad. I was hoping to find someone before the youth of our church got as old as Mrs. Watson. <laughs> well, Reverend, I was thinking if it'll help you out, I could take on that job, too. I love children, and what greater joy can there be than marrying the man you love and having his babies? <laughs> Well, Juanita, I couldn't ask you to take on that responsibility since you're church secretary. Oh, I wouldn't mind the extra work, even if it means staying real late to help you out. <laughs> Maybe we should do that since we don't have anybody else. Perfect. <laughs> I saw your sign outside. My name is Mona Phillips. And here's my resume. <laughs> you should know that the job really doesn't pay that much. Oh, I wouldn't be doing it for the money. As you can see, I'm getting my degree in education. I'd really be doing it for the experience. Well, I noticed there doesn't seem to be any religious experience and you do know historically our youth director has also had to teach Sunday school I could do that then I suppose you know something about the Bible <laughs> well I'd like to think so then you wouldn't mind a few questions just to get an idea of how much you do know <laughs> well you know Benita it's not easy for someone to just come in here and ask the questions about she the Bible she said she knows her Bible <laughs> <laughs> so 
Why don't you just tell us the names of Noah's three sons? Oh, that's a very difficult question, Vanita. I don't think so. <laughs> Shem, Ham, and Yavis. Oh, very good. <laughs> And I suppose you can name the first seven books of the Old Testament. Vanita, I really don't. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's only five. Joshua and Judges. I'm sorry. I always forget which one comes first. Joshua, Judges, or Judges, or Joshua. Uh, yes, yeah, happens to me all the time. Must be the two J's. <laughs> Sixteen says what? Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Exactly. <laughs> very, very impressive. Well, what's there to say but you have the job. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll be seeing you tomorrow, Mrs. Phillips. Yes, you will. And that's Miss Phillips. I'm unattached. I think she's gonna work out just fine, don't you think? Whatever you say, acting, Pastor Randolph. <laughs> Thank all of you for coming this afternoon. I want to announce my first big event as youth director, a dance. Are you with me, team? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, sure. That is a wonderful idea, if I do say so myself. And you did. <laughs> now, we need to form committees. Cassie, I'm assigning you to the decorating committee. some crepe paper streamers and some big bunches of balloons, right, and put them up Well, on. actually, I was thinking something with a little more atmosphere. You know, draping, ambiance, soft lighting. I'll just do the decorations myself. Thank you for your help, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> now, refreshments. Vanita. Okay. Well, I can get some, um, some punch and maybe some chips and pretzels chips? and... Chips? Uh, pretzels? I was thinking something along the lines of finger sandwiches, crudite. I'll just handle the refreshments myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, entertainment. T, do you have any ideas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that'll be cool, you know what I'm saying? I can be the DJ. I could come in, bust some fat rhymes, bring in some turntables, do some scratching. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking something on the lines of a live band. <laughs> okay, publicity. Oh, no problem, Mona, you know what I'm saying? I can take care of that. I'm the bomb when it comes to street promotions. The word would be out like break dancing. <laughs> Thinking something a little more mass media, you know, newspaper ads, radio spots, a website. I think I'll just take, take care of it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we are all on the same team. Well, thank you all for coming. I don't know how I could do this without you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You know, Benita, I was looking forward to some of that juice you make for me every morning. We're out. I need your signature on this contract to refinance the church loan sign here. Well, that's a very pretty dress. Thank you. Sign here, sign here, and initial here. <laughs> so who's the lucky gentleman to take you to the dance tonight? I'm not going. Sign here. How come? Reverend. This is my job. I just work here, and I like to keep my social life and my professional life completely separate. Sign here. Well, I certainly will miss seeing your smiling face. <laughs> Welcome back, Mrs. Dixon. Thank you, baby. Oh, I didn't hear a knock, Mrs. Dixon. You hear that? <laughs> so, how was your three-day cruise to Mexico? 
just fine. One day going, one day coming back, and one day none of your business. <laughs> A little sanctified something, something going on. Huh? <laughs> It's so nice to see you in good spirits. Well, I was until Doris Fredericks picked me up at the pier and gave me an earful about this dance you throwing tonight. Oh, well, don't feel slighted, Mrs. Dixon. There's still a lot of time to pitch in and help on some of the committees. And just what committee are you on? The dragging this church down to the devil committee? <laughs> Mrs. Dixon, I know it's not traditional, but I happen to think this is a good way to attract the young people. Now, they are the future of this church. Well, why can't we get the children in the church the old-fashioned way? You just grab them by the scruff of their neck and drop them in there. <laughs> Mrs. Dixon, times are changing, and the church has to change with the times. Pastor, if you bring that loud music in here, you're going to attract the bad element. And that would suit me just fine. Oh, it would, would it? Yes, it will. Now, the good people come to church on their own. It is the bad element that needs to be saved. <laughs> so we are going to have this dance, Mrs. Dixon. You go ahead, Reverend Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your next gimmick? Oh, oh, no, don't tell me I know. Sunday service with a two-drink minimum. <laughs> Mrs. Dixon. Now, I'm just telling you I smell trouble. Reverend, I am so... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Mona Phillips, the new youth director. And you must be Mrs. Dixon, the one who everyone's afraid of. <laughs> anyway, the dance is going to be a huge success. You won't believe the youth groups I have coming. I met a nice man by the name of Bones, and he said he's going to be here with some of his homies. Oh, I see. We know Brother Bones. He's with the Boulevard Gang. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's this other nice man by the name of... Icebreaker, and he said he'll be bringing some of his associates as well. W would that be the East Side Warriors? Yes, I think that is what he said. Good Lord! <laughs> I am so excited. This is going to be the best dance ever. Nice meeting you. <laughs> the East Side Warriors and the Boulevard Gang at the same dance? Not so good, is it? <laughs> Not so good. This is a disaster. Do you know what happened the last time those two gangs crossed paths? Uh, you know that vacant lot over on 23rd Street? Yes. It used to be the police station. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Dixon, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is say, I told you so. <laughs> and the next thing I'm going to do is tell you to cancel this dance. Oh, no, we cannot cancel the dance. It's tonight. If those two gangs come together, they could cancel this church. And all because of you. Acting Pastor Randolph. <laughs> Anita? Yes, Pastor Randolph. I need you. I knew you would. <laughs> I can't find the bones in your Rolodex, Reverend. Well, keep on looking, Vanita. We have to stop one of these games from coming to the dance tonight. There's going to be big trouble. Yo, Rev, not find Icebreaker, man, but I got his phone number. Well, good. Call him. We're running out of time. Is it possible we're overreacting? I mean, maybe these two gangs will just show up to the dance and dance. Girl, is you smoking? <laughs> Bones and Iceberg got natural born enemies. They go way back. In the second grade, they had a turf war over a sandbox. <laughs> Alvin, Alvin Lewis, that's his real name. Hello? Is this Ice? Yo, we have a guy. Okay. Good, good. Yo, Iceberg, what's up, dog? Oh, your ice pick. <laughs> my bad, man. My bad. Oh, you're his brother? Oh, but will you have any idea what icebreaker is? Okay, thanks. Rev, I know what icebreaker is. Good, where? On his way to the dance. <laughs> I found Bones' number. Good, we'll call him. Maybe we can stop Bones in the boulevard game from coming to the dance. Hello, I'm calling from the Church of Life for Reverend David Randolph. Yes, he is a wonderful man. <laughs> I'm looking for Mr. A Bones. I got his mother. Good. Hold on, ma'am. I'm going to let you speak to the pastor. 
Yes, uh, hello, Mrs. Bones. Uh, I mean, Miss Lewis. How you doing? Good. Um, yes, I am pleased myself that your son's been attending church lately. Yes, well, it's urgent that we speak to your son. Yes, ma'am. Well, by the way, do you know if he's coming here tonight? You know, there is such a thing as too much church. <laughs> yeah. Even God took one day off. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, then. All right, bye. Too late. Him and the gang are on the way to the church. Hey, everybody. What's with the long faces? Let's see those smiles. Our guests will be arriving any minute. It's party time. <laughs> No, you worried because no one is here. Relax, it's only 8 o'clock. No one who's anyone ever comes on time. I'd be fashionably late myself if I weren't the hostess. No, 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 it's not that. There's something you need to know. Well, you're going to have to tell me later because I'm just too busy right now. I can't find my cheese knife and the band still hasn't showed up. Well, no reason for us all to be upset. Yeah, why spoil it for her until she hit a gunfight? <laughs> What are you talking about gunfire? Look, the Boulevard gang and the East Side Warriors are due here at the same time. Any minute. You know what I'm saying? The next time you're here won't be bass. It'll probably be paka, 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 paka. Now, T, we do not know that for sure, okay? Now, I have faith that these are two reasonable groups of people, and when they come under God's house, we won't have anything to fear. Nice little pep talk, Ram. <laughs> It wasn't a pep talk to you, it was a prayer. Well, I'm praying that we make it to the car before rat a tat tat meets plug a plug a plug. What we do, B? Oh, yeah, that's how we come through. Please be careful, Pastor. Hey, Brother Bones! Rev, Rev. How you doing? You know? Good. Living large, living large. You know, I'm digging how your uh, church here is jamming with the hip hop flavor, man. Well, let's just say we're trying to get people saved no matter what the flavor. Ha, ha, I feel you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> Bones, I think we should, uh, chit chat or rap, as they say. <laughs> now, isn't that what we're doing? Oh, yeah, 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 that's a good point. <laughs> um, Bones, there's been a little mix up, and, um, we really didn't want to offend anybody. So, um,. Have you ever heard of the Eastside Warriors? <laughs> Eastside Warriors, yeah, we got a pretty big beef with them. Oh, yeah, so maybe you'd think this was funny. <laughs> um, I've heard that the Eastside Warriors may be coming to the dance tonight, so we were thinking that maybe before they got here, it'd be better if you and your gang left. Now, how you gonna play me like that, Rip? You asking me to run for my own turf here? Well, now, see, I'm not going out like that. If they show up here, it's just going to be on. Well, see, we were thinking that if you left before they got here, they would never know you were here. And we certainly won't tell nobody. <laughs> and, uh, they won't tell nobody either, will we? I know I won't. Me either. No, well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> see? So, um, that's what we want to do. Inside Warriors in the house. Inside Conversation's over, oh, Rev. Well, maybe you guys should just stay right here, okay? Um, how you doing? You must be Brother Icebreaker. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm Reverend David Randolph, pastor of the church. What's up, Preach? If I was you, I'd get out my way. Oh, well, maybe you should, um, You know, I wouldn't even worry about them causing no trouble, Rev, because they're about to get bounced up out of here. You see? That's a job for a man. Yeah. And y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of girls. No, 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 see, no, 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 the hop alongs! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
This is Dixon. It is such a surprise seeing you here. Well, I came to protect my church, but it looks like I owe you an apology. No, Mrs. Dixon, you don't owe me an apology. The only thing you owe me is a dose I do. Look out now. Come on, church. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Death Grip. Good night, Big Daddy Bad. Take care, Lady of Pain. Be cool, dead on arrival. Apparently, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Assassin. Yes, Mrs. Dixon. Tell your mama to call me. Yes, ma'am. Alvin. <laughs> Bye, baby. <laughs> was a wonderful night. Oh, well, yes! <laughs> George S. Jones currently serves as president of WAEN-TV here in Atlanta, Georgia. Mr. Jones has been developing television networks for others for over 15 years. This has afforded him experience in every area of television networking. Fueled by his aspirations to contribute to community development and to assist with the growth of small businesses, he later came up with the idea to develop a worldwide television network that would impact local communities. Thus, WAEN-TV was born. Mr. Jones' educational achievements have aided him tremendously in his role as leader of this organization. In 1975, he received his Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication from Francis Marion College, while concurrently earning an associate degree as an electrician from Williamsburg Technical College. Mr. Jones has produced several special functions for many community churches and nonprofit organizations. One of his most recent successes was the production of the first 100 Black Men of Atlanta Banquet, where his work was greatly applauded. George also displays his versatility with the production of music videos. Included in his resume, you will find a number of successful music artists, including former So So Deaf recording artist Chris Kelly of the famed hip hop duo Criss Cross. <laughs> 